Okay, let's talk about the Alex Math Placement Exam. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the Alex test, and that's excellent, as this is going to have a lot of impact in terms of your math placement. Colleges and universities use the Alex Math Placement Test to do exactly that, to determine your placement into a college-level math class. Now, one of the things that you need to realize, this is a very, very, very important um, test for you. And it's kind of obvious that you're taking this serious because you're obviously looking at this video. You're trying to get, uh, gain information and uh, learn various math skills as you should because what you don't want to do is end up in a course that is beneath your current math skills because you'll end up wasting a lot of time and money. Okay, You don't want to be in the wrong course for a semester or even a year and even worse, you don't want to pay for something that you already know. So it definitely behooves you to prepare as much as you possibly can for the Alex Math Placement Test. Now, um, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and over those years, I've constructed a lot of various math product uh, and various courses, specialty courses, of which I have a Alex Math Test Prep course. That course has done really, really well for a lot of students. So if you need a really great way to prepare uh, for the Alex exam. And what we're talking about here is a lot of high school level mathematics, a lot of algebra, geometry, and even more mathematics uh, beyond that. Go ahead and check out my Alex math placement uh, test prep course. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. But what we got in this particular um, uh, video here is a practice problem that you should be able to do if you are fully prepared for the Alex math placement test. This is kind of fundamental algebra. And let me show you the problem, and of course, I'm going to solve it here in a second. So we have 2 over 1 minus the square root of 3. So my question to you is, is this thing okay the way it's written? Okay, this expression, all right? So hopefully you said no, okay? This is not good the way it's currently uh, written because we have what we call an irrational number in the denominator, right? So we don't want to... Um, leave this expression this way, we need to do something called rationalize this, and we need to find the conjugate, okay? We need to find the conjugate, and we need to simplify or rewrite this uh, expression in a different way. So I'm kind of giving you a bit of a hint for those of you that are thinking, yeah, I kind of remember this. Well, yeah, I'm kind of telling you again what to do. you got to find the conjugate and we don't want to leave this in this current form. So let's go ahead and see how this looks right now. Now, if you want to pause the video and work on this for a second, I think that's a good use of your time. But let me show you how to do this. Okay, so here is our problem. We have 2 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Well, we can't leave this in this particular form. Again, we have an irrational number in the denominator. So what we need to do is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by something called the conjugate. So the conjugate of 1 minus the square root of 3 is 1 plus the square root of 3. So I need to multiply this denominator here by the conjugate being 1 plus the square root of 3. But if I multiply the denominator by the conjugate, I also have to multiply the numerator by the conjugate. If you look here, 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 plus the square root of 3, this is just something divided by itself. This is nothing more than a fancy 1. So we're just taking this expression and multiplying it by 1. So we're really not breaking, um, you know, like changing this mathematically. We're just kind of using a nice little math trick here to rewrite this. And the result of doing this is going to be an expression where we don't have an irrational number in the denominator. So uh, kind of set this problem up for you. So now I'm going to give you a chance to go ahead and do this math. So if you're thinking to yourself, okay, now I remember this, we'll go ahead and pause the video and finish this up and we'll see how well you uh, can do with this. But uh, for those of you who are not sure, I'm going to go ahead and continue on right now. So let's take a look at what we need to do. All right, so here we go. So let's uh, address the numerator first, because that's pretty easy. So 2 times this conjugate, which is 1 plus the square root of 3. Yeah, we could just write that as 2 times 1 plus the square root of 3. We'll just leave that right there. But the more interesting part of this problem is going to be this. 1 minus the square root of 3 times 1 plus the square root of 3. 
How do I deal with this situation? Well, you're going to use the FOIL method, okay? You want to treat this just like a binomial. In other words, if you were asked to take 2x plus 5 and multiply it by x minus 3, how would you do this problem? Well, most of you out there would use the FOIL technique, which is the first, outer, inner, last, first, outer, inner, last, and you want to multiply all these uh, various terms together to get the answer. That's basically what you want to do here. I'm going to show you another way to think of this here in a second. But let's go ahead and walk through the steps. So um, let's focus on, again, the uh, denominator now. So we have 1 minus the square root of 3 times 1 plus the square root of 3. So 1 times this 1, that's our first, okay? 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times this positive square root of 3 is positive square root of 3. Then we have our inner, that's negative square root of 3 times 1, that's negative square root of 3. And then we have a negative square root of 3 times another uh, positive square root of 3, which is going to be the same as a negative or a square root of 3 squared with a subtraction sign in front of it. Okay, we're going to be, uh, we have a negative square root of 3 squared. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify this. You can see that this positive square root of 3 and minus square root of 3 are going to cross cancel one of them, so uh, one another. So we, we're left with 1 minus the square root of 3 squared. What's the square root of 3 squared? Well, that is simply 3. Okay, so we have 1 minus 3. Of course, that's going to be equal to negative 2. Now let's uh, go ahead and, and show you another way to think of this. Uh, when you're doing this, and some of you might have um, learned how to do a problem like this in this manner, which is perfectly fine. So you could see that this setup here is like a minus b, okay? So this would be, or one would be like our a, the square root of three would be b. So this is a minus b, and this would then therefore be a plus b. So a minus b times a plus b, if that looks kind of familiar to you, that is uh, the same thing as a squared minus b squared. So if you're going to factor the difference of two squares, uh, a squared minus b squared, you would get a minus b times a plus b. So when you have a product in the form of a minus b times a plus b, well, you can find that product by going a squared minus b squared. So in this case, a is 1. So this a squared would be 1 squared. And then b is our square root of 3. So b squared would be square, uh, square root of 3 squared. Okay, as you can see, 1 squared is the same thing as 1, and the square root of 3 squared is the same thing as 3, so we end up with the same answer, negative 2. Okay, so that is going to be our denominator, and let's go ahead and uh, rewrite that this way. Okay, so here we have our conjugate. We multiply 2 times this, so we have 2 times our conjugate, 1 plus the square root of 3, and then we did our new, our denominator, excuse me, down here, we did all that work, and we got a negative 2. So here, we can uh, cross-cancel these 2s, but I have a negative 1. Okay, so 2, positive 2 divided by a negative 2 will be a negative 1, or a negative sign outside of these parentheses right here. you got to be really careful. So this negative times that 1 is going to be negative 1, and then this negative times that square root of 3 will be a negative square root of 3. And this is the final answer. Okay. All right. So how did you do? Well, if you got that right, that's excellent. Okay. That shows uh, uh, me and it shows you, more importantly, that you have some pretty decent algebra skills. But again, there is a ton of stuff you need to know for the Alex. So you don't want to get overconfident, uh, but you want to focus on things one skill at a time. Okay. So um, if you want to check out my Alex math prep course, all right, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, please consider subscribing to my channel as I'm doing a ton of videos like this and maybe even liking or tell me some uh, feedback about how things are going with your Alex preparation. But I can tell you right now, um, my Alex math uh, test prep course is, I believe it's 25 chapters. I have a ton of courses. It is a huge amount of material. It's designed uh, to really kind of walk through and review uh, the bulk of high school level mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the Alex Math Placement Test and all your college endeavors. Thank you for your time and have a great day.